Thank you for your coming to this session. Uh, my name is Irineu Rodrigues. I am from Brazil, Fortaleza. And currently, I am the PTA for the NIC project. And today, me and John we will present you uh, some uh, demos for some user cases that we have on the NIC project and some features that we had uh, add, added on the Barilu release. And we will talk a little bit about some features, some uh, uh, a new some status of the DIC project, and we want to talk about the current architecture of the NIC project and how we are doing a PGA in, in implementation and intense state machine. Okay, today we have two demos for this uh, one demo for uh, PGA implementation, and another one for level management for mapping CEPs, right? Okay, I want to start talking about the current status for the NIC project on the Beryllium release. And the Beryllium release has been very productive for the NIC project. On this, this release, we had had some new features uh, for the NIC. Uh, one of those features was uh, bandwidth on demand. Uh, and another one was uh, mapping CEPs that John will present for you today. And an intense state machine. This intense state machine will be responsible to keep the track for all those intents. And I will talk a little more, you know, more details in the next slide. And we have a conflict resolution with using the graph on the NIC project. Another one, we had add some new features to allow, allow the uh, allow the communication between uh, given devices, block, doing a mirroring, or a redirect action. And another one is a KOS, you, um, using the DSCP field, where we, are, uh, we can do a KOS for uh, any uh, groups for a given, a given uh, devices, and just using intent, right? So, and another one is the new project has been suggested as an integrating model for ODL and NONOS. Uh, the Open Network Foundation Boulder project has described the NIC project as a closest prototype for this. Okay. And all of this was in Berlin release. And in Berlin release, we saw that the NIC project is open for new ideas and for new research, like uh, PJ using graph compilation and intent state machine. We have an open community where we are able to uh, hear, uh, listen about new ideas and to bring new developers and to deploy new solutions for the NIC project. Currently, uh, the NIC project has some uh, fields where on the core management, we have the MERP inception that John will talk in more details in the next slides. We have the intense state machine uh, together with event processing. And this, uh, I will talk more detail about the intense state machine, the next slide, okay? And for the traffic forward side, we have our support for output, uh, physical and virtual ports. Uh, all those features has been added on the Berlin release. And now we are supporting a uh, redirect for SFC models. So it is a great integration with uh, ODL NIC project with other open the light projects. And another one's uh, support for QoS. Now we are able to, to do QoS just using the intent, right? From the integration side, we have an open flow render where we can integrate the Neutron, uh, OpenStack Neutron, uh, security policies, using uh, the described intent. And on another side is the, or the PGA implementation that we are uh, compiling the, the intents in just one to solve conflict. And another one is the integration with Boulder project that we want to integrate the NIC project with the ONUS project. This is our current architecture for the NIC project. 
the, our entry point is the Intet API, where we are receiving the, the, the Intets. And using this Intet API, we have uh, Intet CLI module, where we can create an Intet using the CARF command line. The user can, can use the CARF command line to, to type a simple Intet like this. Redirected to load balance the HTTP traffic from department to web. This is an intent. This is the, the desire of the, the, the user. He doesn't need to know which service will be used for that. The NIC project will know what service should handle this intent. So it means that the user will use this intent API to create our intent, just type in a, single, a simple English and the intent uh, API will create this intent and send to MD Sol. And then, on the Beryllium release, we add this new feature called intent listeners. And the intent listener will listen about MD Sol events. When the intent listener receives those events, we can share all those events that we want, uh, filter in, uh, events for all those models on the NIC project. One of those models is the OpenFlow render. Currently, this OpenFlow render is responsible to get the, this intent, uh, extract all those information for this intent, and create the OpenFlow rules and send to all devices that compose this, in, this intent, right? And uh, this OpenFlow render, we use the MDSOL to send this. In this case, we have integration with other projects the other op open delight project is a open flow plugin where we will handle all those flows created by uh, the NIC project. On another side, uh, we have the intent graph that will be responsible for compiling the, the intents and solve conflicts. And when I say about the conflict, it means that we can have an application that wants to create an intent to allow our traffic between two devices, and we can have another application that want to block all those, those uh, the, the, the flow for these two, two same devices. We have a conflict. And the PJ implementation is responsible to solve this conflict and generate the policies for that. I'll talk more details. Once the, the graph compiles those, those intents, it will generate these policies and will send to MDSOL, to OpenFlow Render, to handle our flows. This is our current architecture for the new project. Okay, uh, we are using a DSL to describe our intent. When I say intent, I am talking about a simple English language. So in this case, the user uh, will use an abstracted uh, uh, an abstracted, uh, sorry, uh, the user will use a simple English language to create your intents, like this. From IT department to marketing, allow sensitive traffic between 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. at high bandwidth. It means that the user want to allow traffic between the IT department and marketing. And the second time, it will apply the key OS for this. It means that the NIC project will know that uh, after the user creates this intent, the NIC project will know that he, uh, it needs to use a uh, handler to create the, the allow rule and to apply the key OS constraint. And uh, the, the NIC project, we contain a, a, contains a REST API where we are working to integrate this REST API with the Lux project to give to the user a friendly uh, UI to be more easy to use this. Because currently, you can use the NIC project using the car of CLI over our uh, intent CLI module, right? And we are working to, to do a strong integration with the NIC project and the Deluxe project over this REST API. Uh, another uh, feature that we had added on the Berlin release is the Intent State Machine. This Intent State Machine 
is used to identify the state of the internet and then uh, provide a feedback about the internet. Currently, when we are creating an intent, or a, a, a intent using the NIC, this intent will be deployed to, uh, just in time, right now. When, if I create the, this intent to allow a traffic between A and B, the open flow rules will be applied right now. But we, we don't have the, the, the track for this intent. The idea here is to keep the track for all the original intents and give a feedback to the user for the e state of this internet. And this is real, uh, we have been proposed on the Beryllium release. Currently, we have this implementation there. We have the engine for internet state machine already implemented on the Beryllium, where all those intents will start as undeployed. Once we have this internet created uh, and on the undeployed state, the new project will verify if all those nodes that compose this intent are up on the topology. Because do you agree with me that it doesn't make sense to have the flows on the switch if the, the, the nodes is not up on the, on the topology, right? And once we have the, the intent as undeployed, the intent state machine will try to create all those transactions to try to deploy this intent. So in this case, it means that the intent should go from uh, undeployed to deploying state. When the intent is under deploying state, it means that uh, all the flows are being created and the NIC will try to push these flows to the suites. Once we have all those flows uh, done on the switch, already deployed on the switch, it means that we have the, this intent uh, on the deployed state. When we are receiving an event to, uh, as a switch down or node down, it means that it doesn't make sense to have this, this intent deployed anymore because we don't, need the, we don't have the, 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 uh, any points there or switch there. It means that we should start the process to undeploy this intent and remove all those rules for all the switches. Okay? And once we have all those rules removed from the switch, this intent will go back to the undeployed state. And when we have all those flow, all those nodes and switches come back again, this all this process process to deploy this intent will go back. We will uh, start. This is a basic scenario to give you an understand for how the interstate machine works. Uh, suppose that we have two users, Anna and Brad, and Anna contains three devices on the network, and Brad contains the two devices connected. And one application wants to create an intent that will allow the traffic between Anna and device and, and Brad, sorry. And another application will say uh, redirect all traffic between Anna and Brad to a file set. Do you agree with me that we have? Uh, two different intents with two different actions. It means that we should create two intents, just one match, just one open flow match, and two different actions. Currently, if we create this, the, uh, the, this two intents different, it will uh, generate two different open flow rules. With intent state machine, we are trying to uh, create just one flow with two different e actions. Once the, the user removes just one intent, it means that we can send an update to, to, for the, this flow, saying, hey, update this flow, just removing action one. It's, it is possible because now we are able to, to have a, a keep for all the, 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 the track for the inter original intents and the transactions for each intent. Because once we are creating the, the, uh, the process to try to deploy this intent, uh, the intent set machine will create all those transactions for, to, to go to each state. And we can keep track for all, all processes, all those transactions. And this is another scenario 
we have uh, all devices associated with ANA are tuned off from the topology. In this case, this internet one and two are created, but undeployed. So in this case, we will be in the first state. And the second step, some breath devices are tuned on at the topology, but unknown devices are tuned off yet. Do you agree with me that doesn't make sense to have this intent deployed on the switch? And this, the, 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 the next step, some other device comes back to the topology, and the next we will receive some network events. It means that the, NIC, the, op, the interset machine will create the transaction to start the deployment process for this intent. In the next step, the interset machine will create this transaction, and uh, the NIC project using the OpenFlow render will create all the flows for those intents. This is our idea for the transaction creation. Uh, we are uh, uh, think to use the MDSOL right, to, to, to start our, our transactions. When uh, the NIC project receives an event, like an intent edge, or network uh, node up, or switch up, switch down, we are creating a transaction using the intent set machine. This transaction, once we are creating a transaction from undeployed to go to deployed state, we should create two transactions. It means that these two, two transactions will be dependent and we can keep the track for these two transactions. Once the transaction one is done, we can start the transaction two. But we can receive other transactions, other events for other uh, intents or other uh, network behaviors. In this case, we should create a separately transaction, and these two transa three transactions can be executed in parallel. Okay. Now I will talk about the, another great feature that we have on the NIC project. This is the Intent Graph. Uh, the idea for the Intent Graph is because uh, we c any application can create intents using the, the, the same instance of the NIC project. But some of those intents can, can be conflicted. As I said, application one can create an intent to allow a traffic between two given devices, device, devices A and B. And another one can create another intent to block all the, the, the transactions for the device A and B. Now we have a, 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 a conflict. The idea here is to try to solve this conflict and generate some ads. And then the OpenFlow rule, oh, sorry, the OpenFlow render will manage this, this edge and create the OpenFlow rules based on. So we are using the MDSOL to start the, the compiled, uh, compiled graph because two intents can be compiled and generate just one flow. It means that we, we have these two intents created by different users once the intent graph compiles then, it can be generated just one compiled intent. And then it can, be, can generate just one flow for that. This is an example for us. Uh, we have a demo uh, for the graph where we have uh, the finance group and the marketing group, and we are trying to allow a traffic between marketing and finance. And on the other hand, we have the uh, infected group that we should block this infected group to uh, communicate with marketing. But infected group and finance group are the same group because the device, the device of the, the uh, infected uh, is part of the finance group. It means that we have a conflict here. Once the application one create a, an action to block all the traffic between fun, uh, infected and marketing, and application two wants to allow the traffic from 
finance to market, we are facing a conflict here because the finance contains this endpoint. And the idea for the, the, the graph is to solve this conflict resolution. I have a demo here, I will demonstrate now. Uh, This we, uh, here on this demonstration, we are using internet map, but the focus here is just for the compiler process. Uh, John will talk in more details about the mapping service, right? Here we are creating an intent. The first intent, oh, sorry, the, the, the mapping. We will create the, the first group. This first group is called finance. And we'll put into the, this group uh, so my IP address that will, will be our devices 2.1 and 2.2 now we have a group created there another one is the group marketing it's 2.4. And now I will create the, the group infected. And I will use the same IP address that the, the uh, finance has, 2.1. Now, once we have all those groups, we can create intents using this group, using this mapping service. And I can create an intent, say, add intent from finance to marketing with action allow. It will create a uh, flow to allow the try for both. And the other application can create another intent, say, from infected to marketing, action will be blocked. Now we have a conflict here. To solve this conflict, we should call the graph to compile those intents. When we are calling compile graph, the result will be this. We have original intents, finance to marketing, allowing, and infected to marketing apply block. Here is our conflict. And after that, the graph will solve this conflict. Just applying a rule for 2.1 and 2.4, applying allow, and 2.1, 2.4, applying block. This is uh, how uh, the, the, the intent graph is working for, uh, to solve this conflict. For carbon release, we are thinking in, in integrate the intent set machine with graph. As you can see, once we have the intents compiled, we, are, uh, we lost the original intents because all the renders we work with compiled intents. It means that we should create the intent, and the intent will be compiled by the PJ, and then uh, the, graph, uh, the graph will compose those, those compiled intents. And the graph will send to MDSOL, and we have some listeners for edge using the intent listeners model. Once we have all those edge uh, on the MDSOL, this we will receive an event for edge up or edge down. In this case, uh, the, the conflict has been resolved, and now we have the edge created there. And then, the intensity machine will listen about this edge created. And the intensity machine will say, hey, I know the original intents, because the intensity machine has access to the original intents, and the intensity machine will, ha will do the link for all those intents and the edge is created. And then the intent set machine will create all the transactions to deploy those edges on the, the, the switches. Now uh, John will talk in more details about label management for mapping sets. Please John. Yes, of course.
Thank you, Irina. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Irina. Okay, uh, I'm Jun uh, from the Hero Packer Labs. Uh, I'm uh, talking about the, the label management for the mapping service in the ODL League. Uh, as researchers, uh, we were successfully integrated our previous work uh, called PGA to the ODL League. Last ODL summit, we have uh, in, uh, introduced our PGA from our latest research. Now we are available. We have a PGA available in the ODL League. So today, uh, we are more talking about uh, another our research work for the next release of ODL NIC. One of the limitations in current ODL NIC is a mapping service. How to manage this mapping service automatically, and then how to uh, manage endpoint, any key, any values in this uh, mapping service. Currently, we need any expert knowledge or any database analysis for creating this uh, mapping service and they will trace in the uh, <coughs> manually. But uh, we need a more automatic way for the creating this uh, mapping service, including some label trees and keys and endpoint. Uh, because uh, our current work is uh, currently under review in the one of the international conference, so in this talk, I wanted to share a very basic idea and then how to contribute our work to the next release of ODL NIC. Okay. Uh, as it didn't show before, this is the current ODL NIC architectures. Okay. Uh, we have uh, this uh, mapping service. Currently, we are using the, this uh, uh, hierarchical label tree for creating and composing intent. Okay. But this uh, label tree is uh, currently created uh, manually using, uh, by the expert knowledge. And then we need an additional mapping service for endpoint and endpoint groups. As a Irina showed the demo, we have to create a key with a specific IP addresses. But this is, has the, some uh, limitations in scalability. Whenever we have a bunch of uh, IP addresses and new endpoint, we have to associate this IP address to specific groups manually. Okay? This requires uh, many effort for management. So we are proposing here, so how to automatically manage these label trees and then how to automate dynamically mapping any endpoint and endpoint groups. Our idea is that we can get the any available attribute from the endpoints instead of IP addresses. Whenever we create any new endpoint, such as a new laptop or such as a new virtual machine, they have their own properties. We, can, we try to analyze these properties for each endpoint, and then we can create this hierarchical tree, and then we can manage these memberships. Currently, there's an uh, LMS. Oh, sorry. Okay. Our, uh, we are proposing the LMS uh, at variable management service. This LMS sits between a high level intent engine, such as ODL NI, and infrastructure services, such as uh, SDN controller and any cloud controllers. Uh, instead of uh, creating these uh, label trees manually, we are getting the, some system state and available resources from the control plane, and then we can analyze this data, and then we can try to find available values, and then we can generate these hierarchical trees. Based on this label hierarchy tree, any intent engine can use this label tree for creating intents and compose intents uh, by resolving the possible conflict. Finally, it can deploy this composed intent through the label management service, and then it can apply all detailed endpoint by tracing from the infrastructures. This uh, has a very high scalability because the, we don't have uh, any manual process for detecting the endpoint with the specific endpoint groups because this system can automatically detect any new endpoint and then it can notify uh, and then it can generate this uh, detailed IP address with specific rules. Currently, we have a learning prototype on the OpenStack. Uh, now I'm going to show about more details about OpenStack implementation, but later we can apply this LMS on the uh, ODL side. Okay. Currently, we have uh, implemented the LMS uh, in the one of the OpenStack Neutron plugin. So currently, we are using the OpenStack Congress 
services for collecting all possible information from different services in OpenStack. The Congress is uh, on a policy management service in OpenStack. They are managing the all different uh, services available in OpenStack. Okay. Basically, we can try to give the label tree definitions without specifying any details about how to get this information from the infrastructures. We have an assumption that any cloud admin or as expert can define these uh, values. That means, for example, it's available zone. So we can, uh, any admin can specify this available zone from, uh, in terms of how to get this information from the infrastructures. In terms of users, we don't have to care about these uh, values. We can just define, okay, I want to use the any location label tree with available zone and host. So we can take, uh, LMS can take this info, uh, given input, and then it can automatically generate these types of data log rules. Because currently, Congress is using the data log for managing this data. So we don't have to generate this uh, complex data log. We can just give this simple input, and then LMS can automatically generate this uh, data log. By taking this data log in the Congress, Congress can try to collect all available information from the infrastructures. This is the example in the tables stored by Congress. Currently, we have four available zones and five hosts. Congress can collect this table. Based on this table, uh, LMS can generate this hierarchical tree. Okay. If we have any updated values in the, this table, LMS automatically update these tables. For example, if we have a, one more host for the more virtual machines, and then we can also add uh, this new host in the, these label trees. Currently, uh, we have an open API from the uh, ODL NIC mapping service. We can store this label tree to the mapping service. And then we can use this label tree for creating any high-level intent. Okay. This is one of the examples. Okay. Basically, uh, we want to allow HTTP traffic from the, this EPG1 to EPG2. Okay. Currently, we are defining this EPG1, any virtual machine or any endpoint whose owner is tenant is admin and located in the available zone 1. And EPG2 is uh, located in the available zone 2. Okay. As you can see in the, this instance, we don't have any specific details such as IP address or MAC address. We can just create a very high level intent. Okay. By taking this uh, group of endpoint, LMS automatically uh, create this data rule for detecting any endpoint based on these conditions. Okay. Whenever you created any virtual machines, it can detect the new virtual machine based on this condition, and then it can default this new member to the mapping service. If you created one more virtual machine here, it can automatically detect its uh, VMID, port ID, IP address, and then we can generate a uh, detailed uh, open flow rules. Okay, I'm going to show the, our current demonstration. This is the OpenStack dashboard called Horizon. We have uh, extended uh, uh, our LMS services under admin menus. Okay? So currently, we are defining a label as a key and values. Okay? There are three keys, application, tenant, and locations. And then we can define the values. Uh, this input actually from the cloud admin or any expert. As you can see in the here, okay, for example, in the host values, so we are defining the how to get this host information from the infrastructure. Currently, we can get the, this host information from the Nova database. There is a one host table. We can get the, this information from the uh, 
uh, this Nova database is. Okay. So cloud admin or expert can define these types of key and values. And as users, we can just use this uh, key and value set for creating our label trees. Okay. Currently, we are just uh, defining label tree with only a list of values without any specifying details. Okay. If you want to create a user label tree, you can define the user label tree with the user values. While you can give them some hierarchical orders uh, in this value set. Our ongoing work is the currently we are assuming that uh, we have to get uh, this hierarchical order from the user, but our another work is the we are trying to find that this uh, hierarchical relationship automatically without any assumptions. Here, okay, based on this uh, input of a label tree, LMS automatically creates a new label tree based on this input. Okay. As you can see in the, this menu, okay. it can create this label tree. Currently, we have uh, two available zones, AG1 and AG2. There are two compute nodes under the AG1, the one compute node and AG2. Okay, now uh, we are trying to update any cloud data. For example, I want to move uh, this one host to from the Avelto 1 to Avelto 2 using the open, uh, OpenStack APIs. Okay. Here it is. Yeah, this is the default admin menus in the OpenStack. Uh, we can use the host aggregate menus. It is managing the Avelto zone and host mappings. Okay. Basically, we are updating this uh, Avelto zone and host mappings. Uh, I'm going to move the COM2 from the Avel zone 1, and then I can attach this COM2 to the Avel zone 2. Okay. This is just examples. You can change anything in this infrastructure using the OpenStack standard APIs. Okay. I want to show the how, to, uh, how LMS update these changes automatically. Yeah. As you expected here, so LMS updated these label trees. We just move the COM2 from version 1 to the COM2, uh, version 2. Okay. Whenever we have a new compute node, a new web zone, we can update this label tree and then we can notify to the ODL NIC side. Now I'm, uh, I'm going to show the how to manage the endpoint and endpoint groups. Okay. Here, uh, we are currently using the uh, Boolean expression of the each, uh, set of labels for defining EPGs. For example, in this EPG2, uh, we are defining this EPG2, which is any virtual machines whose uh, tenant is a demo and located in the uh, Ubuntu compute node. Okay. We can just define a group using this Boolean expressions. We can take this input from the other intent engines, such as ODL NIC. Now uh, I'm gonna create uh, one more EPGs using the our in interface. Okay, I want to create a new EPG three. Okay, any virtual machines uh, whose uh, user is uh, 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 located in the version one. Okay, and simply we can define location label three and version one as a key. Basically, we can take this input from the other intent engines, and then LMS can manage this membership. Currently, we, we have no VM in the current OpenStack environment. So as you can see that here, so currently we have uh, two virtual machines that are associated with this uh, EPGs. This EPGs, uh, this virtual machines whose owner is admin. Okay. I want to show the current uh, list of instances in this environment. Currently, we have uh, two virtual machines created by admin users. These two virtual machines are located in the available zone 2. So why uh, we didn't see the, any virtual machine in the available zone 1? And now, uh, I want to remove one of the virtual machines from the, this menu. So as you expected, LMS uh, has to update these memberships automatically. Okay. Currently, I'm removing this web VM1 from the this instance menu. So 
sorry, the, I'm just running on the, my, this open state in one of the, my, one of the, my virtual machines in laptop. So this is very slow. Okay. I just removed one virtual machine. Okay. And then we can see the here. Uh, I want to show the EPG1. EPG1 is a virtual machine whose owner is uh, admin. Okay. So as you can see, in the, there is only one virtual machine as endpoint. Likewise, uh, whenever we have a new endpoint as virtual machine or new network port, it can manage this membership. That means we don't have any new uh, management system for endpoint, endpoint groups. Okay. So we don't need any uh, infrastructure changes. We can just detect uh, these changes from the infrastructure and then we can generate new rules uh, based on our high level intent. Okay. This is my the demo and then we can wrap up. Okay. Uh, I hope uh, this LMS will be available in ODL next soon uh, because uh, we need more feedback like uh, we have uh, actually very much uh, feedback from our last PGA work uh, after we presented the PGA work in the last ODL summit. We are also getting the more feedback from the all communities in these uh, new topics. Okay, thank you. And then, do you have any questions? Say yeah, <laughs> I think so. So thank you so much for your time in this session. And we want to listen about your feedbacks for this and uh, go to uh, talk with some Nick uh, guys and to meet the Nick project and work with us. Thank you so much for you. As our integrating model for ODL and Nonus. Uh, the Open Network Foundation Boulder project has described the NIC project as a closest prototype for this. Okay. And all of this was in very new release. And in very new release, we saw that the NIC project is open for new ideas and for new research, like uh, PJ using graph compilation and intent state machine. We have an open community where we are able to uh, here, uh, listen about new ideas and to bring new developers and to deploy new solutions for the NIC project. Currently, uh, the NIC project has some uh, fields where machine. Okay, today we have two demos for this: uh, one demo for uh, PJ implementation and another one for label management for mapping CEPs, right? Okay, I want to start talking about the current status for the NIC project on the Beryllium release. And the Beryllium release has been very productive for the NIC project. On this, this release, we had add some new features uh, for the NIC. Uh, one of those features was uh, bandwidth on demand. Uh, and another one was uh, mapping CEPs that John will present for you uh, today. And an intense state machine these intent state machines will be responsible to keep the track for all those intents. And I will talk in more, in more details the next slide. And we have a conflict resolution with using the graph on the NIC project. Another one, we had add some new features to allow, allow, the, uh, allow the communication between uh, given devices, block, doing a mirroring, or a head direct action. And another one is uh, KOS you, um, using the DSCP field where we are uh, we can do a KOS for uh, any uh, groups for a given, a given uh, devices and just using intent, right? So, and another one is the new project have been suggested uh, on the core management we have the MERP inception that John will talk in more details in the next slides. We have the intent state machine uh, together with event processing. And this, uh, I will talk more detail about the intent state machine, the next slide, okay? And for the traffic forward side, 
we have our support for output uh, physical and virtual ports. Uh, all those features has been added on the Berlin release. And now we are supporting uh, Redirect for SFC models. So this is a great integration with uh, all the LNIC project with other open the light projects. And another one is uh, support for QoS. Now we are able to, to thank you for coming to this session. Uh, my name is Irene Rodrigues. I am from Brazil, Fortaleza. And currently I am the PTL for the NIC project. And today, me and John, we will present you uh, some uh, demos for some user cases that we have on the NIC project and some features that we had uh, add, added on the Barilu release. And we will talk a little bit about some features, some uh, 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 new, some status of the DIC project. And we want to talk about the current architecture of the NIC project and how we are doing a PGA implementation and intensity 